Thank you. We don't know the, the men and women whom you represent, but uh, we do want to honor those that made that sacrifice and gave their lives. Of course, Memorial Day is expanded, not just to include those who have died in military service, but also uh, to those who have died, uh, the ones that we love. We do pause and remember those. So again, just uh, be praying for our, our church uh, search committee, be praying for our schools as they wrap up the year, and also be praying for Vacation Bible School, because in just a month, we will be beginning those fun times with the kids here. They're working hard on that. And in fact, you can get online on our church website, and you can register that you're coming, how many kids you're bringing, and uh, whether they're grandkids or neighbor kids, uh, or your own kids, or if you want to be a kid, <laughs> you can come. <laughs> Um, it's going to be good. If the church people could get online, and again, you can get to gbavenus.com. should be listed there somewhere in our, um, our news items. But um, let the leaders know. It really helps them as they prepare and plan. And I'm going to invite the kids to go back to the cups Grab a cup, come down. This uh, the funds that they collect go to Echo Ridge uh, Christian School. And if the kids would just, uh, just again, want to remind them not to run up, Lucy, don't run up those stairs, Lucy. That way, <laughs> you can go behind the stairs, but just don't trump up those stairs. Thank you very much. Well, welcome, boys and girls. Have a seat here in the front. And usually when I tell you children's story, I might have a story from when I was a little boy or maybe a story from a mission field, like in a country far away. Uh, but today it's not so much of a story, but just something for us to remember about something special. And if you were paying attention to Pastor Jeff and what he was talking about, you might have caught it. Now, how many of you know that we have what's called a three-day weekend this weekend? And why, why do we have a three-day weekend? Do you know why? So you normally weekend is Sabbath and Sunday, but for many people, even on Monday, we don't have to go to school or go, for some of us, don't have to go to work. It's a special day, and you might have heard Pastor Jeff talk about, okay, Yes, Adam. It's Memorial Day. Okay, it's, this Monday is Memorial Day. Now, who knows what Memorial Day is? What's Memorial Day? Anyone want to anyone want to guess what Memorial Day is? Is it a day just to be off of school? Or is it a day to have a barbecue at the lake with your friends and family? It it, it can be, right? It can be. But Memorial Day is really a day where, if you want to think about it, is a day to remember, right? So I have a picture here for you guys. What is this, what is this a picture of? Can you see? Yes, it's a flower, but not just any flower. Do you know it's a special kind of flower? Do you, does it look familiar? We have, we have flowers that look kind of like it, it does. So say that again. California poppy just red. That's right. So this is a red poppy. So 
Um, back many, many years ago, many years ago, over a hundred years ago, um, our country went through a very sad time, a very great war called the Civil War. Uh, and people fought and died in the Civil War so that people could have freedom. And after that, they wanted to remember the people who passed away doing that. And so they had a special day, but they didn't call it Memorial Day. Do you know what they called it? They called it Decoration Day. Does that sound familiar? Do we? We don't really call it Decoration Day anymore. And it was every May 30th. So every May 30, they would have Decoration Day, and people would go to the grave sites of the people who pass and, and decorate them and honor those people. And from what I read, I read that they chose May 30 because there was no significant battle on that day. So they didn't want to be like honoring a battle. They wanted to honor the people. So they chose May 30. Um, and then over time, then America was part of another war called the Great War, uh, also known as World War I. And many, many people passed away in that war too. But guess what? A lot of people saw on the battlefield these flowers that were sprouting up. Even after all that destruction, they saw something beautiful come up. Um, and somebody wrote a very famous poem that talks about these poppies called, well, it, it, it's in Flanders Fields. You guys can probably read about it in school. But people realize that, hey, you know what? There's something that's sad that happened, but we can remember those people because they gave their lives for doing something good for us to help us. Now, guess what? We have Memorial Day once a year, but isn't there a day that happens more frequently where we remember something where somebody died for us, doing something good for us? What day is that? What day? Say that. Sabbath. That's right. Did you guys all hear that? We have Sabbath Day. Sabbath Day doesn't happen just once a year. It happens every single week. And Sabbath Day, in a way, is for us to remember things, too. And we can remember lots of things on Sabbath day. It's the birthday of the world, so we can remember that God created the world for us. But it's also a day that we can remember that Jesus died for us and died for our sins. And guess what? The people who died in Christ, they're still resting, waiting for Jesus to come back. But we can be joyful and we can have a lot of hope because Jesus not only died but rose again. And he's there in heaven um, helping us. So just remember, even though we're celebrating Memorial Day once a year, every Sabbath we can remember what Jesus did for us, and that gives us a lot of hope. Well, thank you so much for listening. You can walk back to your seat, and don't forget to get your craft. Thank you. I guess I'm on, huh? <laughs> uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, how many of you noticed the new roof on our church? <laughs> Those that worked on it, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got a new, and we got new gutters. Did you notice that? You know, uh, as, I was, as I was thinking uh, uh, what to say up here, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a uh, a low. You know, the COVID-19 has kind of calmed down. Uh, we can come to church and we can sing and everybody's here and enjoying each other. And then uh, I was thinking, is there something going to happen here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> too much of a, a lull in, in, uh, at the time because... You know, we got the the war in uh, Ukraine, and uh, people are dying, and, you know, it's really sad. I just, uh, 
breaks my heart when I, I look at what, uh, what, what Russia is kind of just destroying the country. I mean, what kind of a war is that? It's terrible, just terrible. And, uh, uh, you know, since, since it's all kind of quieted down, everything seems like it's normal again, except over there. And I just feel like, uh, you know, what's next? Anyway, I have some text I'd like to read to you. Uh, this one found, uh, this one is found uh, in uh, Psalms 33, uh, 13, and 14, and 15. It says, the Lord looks down from heaven and sees all the children of men and from the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. And he fashions their hearts individually. And uh, he's concerned for their work. And then uh, I have another one here in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive them their sins and heal their land. And then the last one is found in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and I'll remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. What kind of a Lord do we, we worship? Just you know, creates in us a new heart just to love him more. What a great God we have. Uh, I'd like to have the deacon stand up. Uh, our offering uh, this time is for, uh, I think it's, Conference, conference, uh, help me. Yeah, conference advance. Thank you. <laughs> Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Dear kind Heavenly Father, oh Lord, you're so gracious to us. You love us. You give us comfort. You have, uh, we have a uh, roof over our heads. You provide jobs for us. You give us money. What a great God we have. Now we have a chance to give back to you what you've given so bountiful, so bountifully to us. Now guide us now, direct these offerings to your cause, Lord. And we'd like to have you come very, very soon. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Since we don't have any music playing, I might as well start the worship, call to worship. <laughs> uh, we, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Steve already uh, started a, a sermon on the Sabbath. And last week I talked about repairing the breach, looking at these ancient truths that give us and repair our society, give us uh, healing. And specifically, the Seventh-day Adventists, we know that the healing of the breach is actually about the Sabbath. And so today we're going to unfold... What Isaiah 58 says about not breaking, keeping your feet from breaking the Sabbath. Man, feet can break bricks, they can break wood. You see those karate chops that those special YouTube specialists can do. 
at, is that what the Sabbath is? Don't break the Sabbath with your feet. What does that mean? We're going to unfold it. And I think you're going to find a really beautiful picture of what God wants us to do and be on the Sabbath. Our mission statement is to live by faith, to serve with love, to be a voice of truth and hope. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing your presence into our church on this holy special day. Time is filled with holiness. Our church is filled with holiness. Our hearts are filled with holiness. And we just thank you, God, for that huge blessing. Bless us now as we sing in preparation for the word. We pray in your name. Amen. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. Forth to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. He that are his now serve him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, he dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watching unto prayer. Where duty calls for danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor's song. To him that overcometh a crown of remain standing as we sing this next song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, 
Shall we kneel in prayer? O oh Lord, our Father, Lord of all the heavens and earth, and what a day that'll be when we shall see you face to face as a man talks to his friend. And those who wait on the Lord, ye shall renew their strength, and we shall mount up with wings like eagles, and shall run and not be weary, and we shall walk and not faint. Lord, thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you that we are able to meet and to greet each other and to show our love for you, Lord. Now have your angels walk down these aisles and keep the evil ones away from, from us and keep your temple holy here. May your Holy Spirit Convict our hearts, comfort and heal us. So as we stand in these last days, just give us hope and understanding. Give us wisdom now as we read and share your word with our relatives and our friends and our neighbors and those that we have special contact with. We need to know that you are living with that we are living close to the end of time. And uh, so help us keep our minds focused on you, Lord. That's where it has to be, focused on you. And be with our world leaders. I think they need your direction. Help their minds and thoughts and do according to your will. Be with our men and women in uniform and bless them and help them. Lord, they're all over the world, so please be with them and guide and protect them. Now be with our schools and our teachers and our children. Oh, Lord, we pray for our children. Please help them. They live in a wicked world, and uh, there's so many things out there that distract them. So guide them, please. Be with the sick, heal them, bring them back to our church. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. Put your arms around them, the arms of love. And now, Lord, please give a double portion of your Holy Spirit to Pastor Jeff. And bless him as he speaks to us now. Yet in all these things, and that happen in the world, we are more than conquerors through Jesus who loves us. And we are persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor any height or depth or any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now as we pray, we pray this all in the name of Jesus. And all the congregation said, Amen. Happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading today is found in Isaiah chapter 58, verses 13 and 14. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land 
and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Oh, thank you, Kaylee. Um, just found out a little bit ago, uh, Kaylee uh, stepped in for Maddie Brown, uh, who's not here today. Chrissy's not here because Joanne Ensminger passed away just yesterday, right, Amy? Last night. Okay, last night. So Joanne um, is, is Chrissy's grandmother and um, Diane's mom and relatives and many others. So we just want to remember their family. And um, boy, Memorial Day keeps, we add more and more to our list of people to remember, don't we? And we long for Jesus to come. Uh, Memorial Day is a day when we stop and we slow down to remember those special people in our lives. Well, there's another memorial God gave us, and that's what uh, Van mentioned. It's the Sabbath, where we stop and slow down and remember the wonders of God. So I want to take a little bit, uh, I want to take some time today in our sermon to wonder and ponder uh, what the Sabbath means to us, especially looking at that text that Kaylee read. Um, And I really, I've been, I want to talk a little about how to keep the Sabbath. And um, typically when you preach a sermon on how to keep the Sabbath, you have the the traditional standards, you know, like uh, you don't, you don't work on Sabbath. That's a big one on the commandment. And you don't shop and buy on the Sabbath. Uh, you don't watch secular TV on the Sabbath. You don't read your regular magazines on the Sabbath. You do positive things like you go out in nature. Or you will go to church. And those are all wonderful standards. And they're great because they point you in the right direction. But they don't get you to the, the bullseye of what the Sabbath wants to be. Sabbath is, is so, in some ways, the, the standards are like the outer circle of a bullseye. They, they're, they're telling you where the middle is, but you get down to the principle and you get down to the heart of the matter. What is the heart of the matter? Well, we're going to find it from Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. If you want to turn in your Bibles there, you're welcome to, or if you want to look on screen, Isaiah 58, 13. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day. Let's just stop there for a moment. What does it mean to keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath? I've always, did anybody ever wonder like this as a kid? Like, what does that mean? How do feet break the Sabbath? Well, um, this text and another text in Nehemiah and and Ezra and some other texts and in Deuteronomy, the Jews took this to mean that you couldn't travel so far on the Sabbath. Like you could travel whatever the distance was to get to the synagogue or to the temple, but you couldn't go any farther. And, the, and so the idea is that it's a lot of work to travel, and the Bible says don't work, and so we don't work. And if there are any of you out there who hate exercise, you're like, amen, amen. Sweat and running and jogging is work and Thank the Lord I don't have to work. Kind of reminds me of the kids who are like, Honey, will you uh, take this dish to the, the sink? Dad, it's the Sabbath. We don't work on the Sabbath. Well, okay, that's true, but there's a little more to it. No, it's not that God's against exercise. In fact, later on, it's really interesting, Jesus was a little upset with the rabbis because they seemed to limit the Sabbath to this concept of just not walking so far. So what does it mean? Don't break, your, don't break the Sabbath with your feet. Well, I was really blown away with when I looked at the commentators, and they said, you know, when, when Isaiah talks about feet, and the Bible talks about feet, they're just not talking about skin, bones, uh, digits, toes, toenails, in the bare physiologically concept of feet. It's a symbol of travel. It's a symbol of travel. You ever heard that phrase, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good tidings? He's talking about missionaries who are traveling to share the gospel. So feet means travel. Okay, so we can go to the next step and say, well, does that mean that God doesn't want us to travel on Sabbath? And I'll be honest, like sometimes Steph and I, we've had like a Sabbath off, and I remember one time I said, honey, 
Sabbath is more restful when my children are strapped in a car seat, (laughs) traveling through the mountains. Is that breaking the Sabbath? No, I don't think that's breaking the Sabbath. But I tell you, I do not fly on the Sabbath. I don't fly on the Sabbath. Man, you go through the the terminals of the airport and you're stressed because you're trying to get on. It's not Sabbath-y. Anybody ever heard that word before? What does Sabbath-y mean? Well, you'll understand as we talk about the point of the Sabbath. But no, it's this, the, the point of the Sabbath isn't just uh, don't travel on it. That's not what Isaiah is trying to tell us. No, he's trying to get that bullseye or trying to get to the heart of the matter. Well, the commentator I was reading pointed me to the story of Moses. Moses was once challenged to take his shoes off in the presence of God. And when you read this passage, it'll unlock Isaiah 58. So holding Isaiah 58, flipping your Bibles over to Exodus chapter 3, and let's read the story of Moses and how he took his shoes off. And let's pay attention to the dynamics in this story. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Blew his mind. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. I want to add the two words that I like to summarize this strange sight. It's a mystery. It's a wonder what what is going on why does the bush not burn up when the lord saw that he had gone over to look god called to him from within the bush moses 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 said here i am do not come any closer god said take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground Moses takes off his sandals. He puts them on the side because God said it's holy ground. What made that ground holy? The presence of God. It's what makes the Sabbath holy. It's what makes you holy. You're the temple of the God of the universe. When you invite his presence into your life, that's what makes you holy. That's what makes you holy. And Moses stands there in the sweet, holy presence of God, and he's marveling. What is this mystery? Why does this bush not burn up? And God unfolds to him the plan of redemption. Have you ever wondered why it's a bush? Well, there's no trees in desert land in, in, in Israel, so God chose a bush, and it represents the tree of life. And the tree of life is a way to live life. It's a principle. It's an unfolding. It's not just a philosophy. It's a, it's a spiritual journey you take. And the tree of life represents God's way. And the bush represents God's unfolding truths. And Moses has to slow down, and he has to see what's paying attention and see what's happening. And God unfolds to him the plan of redemption and his role in it. And God, to get Moses in the mindset to really understand the significance of this plan of redemption and his role that God's going to ask him a big step to take into, God says, you got to get in the mindset. you got to take off your shoes. you got to realize you are on holy ground. Just a moment ago, before, Moses was just a shepherd doing his job. He's making sure you know, sheep over here and bow sheep over there is in line. He's traversing the landscape he's trying to find water for his sheep he's just doing his job and suddenly god gets his attention and says take off your shoes and some people wonder why does god say take off your shoes is it because well shoes are dirty and dirt represents sin so take off your shoes because you're in the presence of god and it's supposed to represent not having sin in your life and And I think that's a good, beautiful concept, but I don't think that's the truth because if dirt is sin, he takes his shoes off and now his feet are in dirt. He's not in a polished marble temple with a beautiful solid floor. No, he's in the desert. It's sandy. It's dirty. So dirt doesn't represent sin. Why does he tell him to take his shoes off? 
Because when you take your shoes off, you have to slow down. You ever been outside on a gravel driveway without shoes? Do you run across that gravel driveway? Oh no. You ever been in the hot sand in the desert, rocky terrain? Do you run across barefoot? No, you run in and you grab your sandals. I've been there. I've been telling you, sometimes it, I'll get up in the morning and I've got to get something quick out of the car. Maybe I left my phone in the car and I, don't wanna, I can't find my shoes. So I go on my gravel driveway. You know how it is. You, you're kind of like, you're not running. You're not slamming your feet into that ground. In the Bible times, let me tell you, it was rough terrain. There was no paved, slick sidewalks. Take off your shoes means to stop traveling, stop working, and slow down. Do you need to slow down to appreciate and savor the presence of God? Oh, yeah. To really grasp a holy mystery, an amazing wonder, you've got to stop what you're doing. You've got to pause before God. You can't rush a deep new awareness of his truth you can't make a heavenly pit stop and in 15 seconds refill up with the divine heavenly presence and move on psalms 33 verse 8 says let all the earth fear the lord let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him don't rush and that's what the sabbath does the sabbath says stop working Enough's enough. Savor who I am. My family sings a song. I sang it to you years ago. The second verse says this. Work aside, the week is done. Calm your spirit, Sabbath's come. No more hurry, no more fear. No more scurry, Sabbath's here. Special moments on this day. We want to find the peaceful way. Always on the Sabbath blessed. We trust you for this holy rest. It's a simple song we sing every week. And what is it telling me? It's telling me no more hurry, no more scurry. Sabbath's here. Because you've got to slow down if you're going to savor the truth of God. Last uh, Thursday night I had chaplain's class. In uh, our chaplain's class, we actually have a Zoom meeting. We get on, we Zoom. Every now and then we go down, I go down to the hospital, but usually we Zoom together. And this night, uh, we Zoomed on, and the teacher says, okay, everyone, I've got this really great video I want you to watch. It's about uh, helping patients in the end of their life and the things, the conversations they need to have with loved ones. And uh, it's, it's really powerful. It's an hour and a half long. Let's all log off of the Zoom class, watch the hour and a half long YouTube video, and then log back on and we'll discuss it. And I thought, oh, yeah. Because you know on YouTube, you can increase the playback speed of a video? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Because he told me the time we had to get back on. So I did. I clicked on the YouTube video and I set the setting for 1.25 speed. And so here's the guy, you know, talking fast. Blah, 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 blah. And after a while, I'm like, oh. I can't do this. i got to stop it. Why? Because this guy was talking life and death. And he had some insights that were making my soul stop and say, whoa. You can't speed through the divine. You can't rush through the awareness of God's presence. That's why God says Sabbath is a whole 24-hour day. We need a whole dedicated day to pierce through our crazy, stress-induced, busy lives. You know, God didn't start the Sabbath at 6 p.m. He started it on sunset. Why? Because sunset to sunset. And why sunset to sunset? Yes, we need the whole day. But that magical moment where God says, man, isn't this a scenic, natural moment in time that your brain catches on and goes, okay, I need to slow down and listen to God. Elijah Listen to the still small voice, and he heard God. Matthew 15, 52 says, The scriptures are a treasure that we seek on the Sabbath, and nature is a treasure that we seek on the Sabbath. And 
You've got to slow down to appreciate those things. A beautiful mystery awaits on the Sabbath. The Sabbath, the presence of God, is like a young rose. You cannot force those petals to unfold in a fast minute. You know, man, so many people, we go to church, and, you know, Seventh-day Adventists, we keep the whole day, but we know of people who go to church, they do their thing, then they rush off to mow their lawns, to shop the malls, to go to birthday parties. It's like they're saying, Lord, thanks for the show. Now I gotta go. And Sabbath, the church for them is a one-hour event. But, you know, for us Sabbath keepers, as we say in scriptures, no, it's the whole day. You realize that we would not have the book of Revelation if John the Revelator was not a Sabbath keeper? In Revelation 1.10, John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. The whole Lord's day gave him enough time to soak in the Spirit of the Lord. And God was able to give him those prophetic insights into the future. Because you know what? He slowed down on the Sabbath. Now, you're probably like me. I get in do mode, and in six days, I'm, you know, yeah, you know, you get in do mode, and boy, my kids, uh, they, I think they'll tell you, I, I imagine they'll tell you that I'm kind of a bear when I'm in do mode, like, hey, we got to mow the lawn, and we got to get ready for this, and we got to get that done, and we got to get that done, and, and boy, when Steph and I get in do mode, my kids, like, they try to hide, you know, it's like, Oh, I, I got to use the restroom. <laughs> I, uh, I got homework. I got homework. Yeah, yeah. Well, school's over. Oh, I don't know. I really want to study up on that topic. No, I'm just kidding. They're not that bad. But you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be with people that are in stress mode. And we're all that way, right? Stress is, we're grumpy. Like, we, we're in do mode. But on the Sabbath, you're not a human doing. You're a human being. You get to be on the Sabbath. You don't have to do on the Sabbath. So take your shoes off on the Sabbath. Get in touch with the earth. Let your toes feel the dirt. Let the bottoms of your feet touch the grass. Let your spirit, metaphorically, get in touch with just what is. Let your heart see the bush. Let the Lord speak his words to you. Jordan was telling me yes, yesterday how when he started his nursing class, uh, the t- one of the teachers challenged him, Ron, to read Steps to Christ. I don't know if it was you or someone else. But so he was on a walk, and he was reading, and his, he's reading that first page. It says in there that uh, God is love, is written on every opening bud, upon every spire of springing grass, the lovely birds making the air vocal with their happy songs, and it goes on, and Jordan says he stopped and he said he listened and for the first time in a long time, if ever, it dawned on him the chorus of beautiful birds of singing their trills. And every now he and he goes out and he stops and he listens and, and he's starting to pick out kind of how they how the different songs they sing and the different types of birds and what they sing and and he starts to feel their rhythm and how they respond to one another. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what the Sabbath is. It's this time where we pause and we listen and we start letting the mysteries that God has unfold before us. I've learned a powerful lesson. I, I uh, wasn't going to share this, but Dick told me today, he says, you know, it's my anniversary of Phyllis and me getting married. Last week, right, Dick and Phyllis? Congratulations. Well, it's, I'll tell you the story. This it relates to what I'm preaching about. As a pastor, someone asked me to do a, sab- a wedding on Sabbath. And uh, I said, okay, I'll do it. Had a little qualms about it, but I did it. And afterwards, I said to myself, I'll never do a Sabbath wedding again. Why? Because on the Sabbath, bless those young brides. Not all of them, but most of them are pretty stressed. They want the day to be perfect, and, and the family's making sure this is ready, and that's ready, and it's it's not a restful day. And I thought, I'll never do that again. And then Dick and Phyllis came along and they said, will you do our wedding? And it's on Sabbath. And I said, yeah, I'll do it. Because I had a hunch. And I was right. Older people do not stress about all the little specialties that you're supposed to have at a wedding. They're just happy to have a loved one. 
And so we did. In fact, I think we had all the staging up here from, uh, from In Concert Sierra. It was not the prettiest place. Dick and Phyllis were like, we don't care, Pastor. That's a special day to us. We want it. And I tell you, it was, it was worshipful. They came down and they looked in each other's eyes. They weren't stressed. And I thought, this is a Sabbath experience. And it's not that having a wedding on Sabbath is wrong, and even not having a birthday party is wrong on the Sabbath, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you get stressed. And the mysteries of God become darkened with the do mode. So now you said, oh wait, let me say it this way. You can't slow down. Oh, the Bible says do not do your own pleasure. You can't do your own play. You can't watch TV. You can't play video games. You can't read fashion and car magazines because that's just filling your mind up again with things that block you from the mysteries and wonders of life. There's a mystery awaiting your inquiry. There's a wonder to be uncovered. There's a reverence you'll find adventurous. There's a worship that leads to friendship. But first, you have to slow down. So you may say to me now, Pastor, okay, I'm a Sabbath keeper, or I want to be a Sabbath keeper, I want to slow down, and I've told my boss I'm not going to work. How do I keep the Sabbath besides just being slowing down and, and, and being, what am I looking for? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you what you're looking for. Okay, I already mentioned it. God, nature, the Bible. Those are what you do on the Sabbath. But there's another piece that I think is powerful. And I think it always strikes me as funny because when people think about the Sabbath commandment, they think that it only relates to God. For example, well, the fourth commandment is on the left side of the Decalogue, the four that deal with God, and the next six are all the ones that deal with man. So Sabbath is all about God. But you know what? You read the Exodus chapter 8, and it says a lot about other people. It says, thou shalt not do any work. And you know who else? Your daughter, or your son, your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, even, the, even your animals, and the stranger that is within your gates. The Sabbath is absolutely a community day. And I'm not saying you can't go off into nature and spend that time alone. You need to. But the Sabbath, man, that's a transition from God to people. And when you turn into, tune into the presence of God with other people who are looking for God, it's powerful. You know, just this last Tuesday, we had a special anointing for a young man. And I tell you, it was really special because, you know, all these kids came in. Joey, we had an anointing for his teeth. He, Joey fell down and he's got some broken uh, spots in his teeth, and it's pretty serious. And so, Joey, you asked us to pray for you. And not just did the adults show up, but all the kids showed up, didn't they? And I tell you, it was a special moment. Why? Because all these adults and all these kids, and you know, it's hard to get adults and kids to slow down. But I'm telling you, man, we were, we were tuned in. We were petitioning God for Joey's teeth. Because God cares even about teeth. And the fact that every one of us was dialed in at the same moment gave that prayer that much more significance. If Joey had just prayed for himself alone, it would not have the same impact. And that's why the seventh day is the Sabbath. Part of that is because God values the seventh day, but part of it is God's just trying to get us all coordinated on the same day. There's articles that are written and say, they'll say to people, don't take Wednesday off as your day off. Why not? I can go to the dentist, I can go to the bank, I can get all my errands done. No, because a day off is a day off because there's people, there's family, there's loved ones that you get to be with. And when you come together like we did that last night and, and as special, and we think about God in a special way, God shows up in a way he doesn't show up where two or three are gathered in my name. He unfolds mysteries. This is what, was so I, I started thinking about what are the mysteries? Well, did you know the Bible says that one of the mysteries, I'm not a mystery, you call it a wonder. If you on Sabbath dial into other people and you're looking for God, you'll find him. Matthew, 8, 5, Matthew 18, 5 says, whoever welcomes a child in my name welcomes me. 
If you can slow down enough and stop, get, stop being in do mode and sit down with a child and just look at that child and say, somehow God is present here. His an- this child's angels behold the face of God. Hey, is that a mystery? Is that a wonder to behold? Is that tapping deep into the creation of life and what's going on? Absolutely. Hey, you can't do that alone. Hey, the Bible says man and your daughter and your manservant. There it goes. Your, your, your son and your daughter. Those are made in the image of God. What about the, the manservant, the maidservant? Well, not quite exactly like that, but the Bible does say that whenever you welcome the least of these, my brethren, you welcome me. So if you're making the least of these, my brethren, work, you don't get the chance to let them be stressless. You don't get the chance to know them and look at someone who's lower than you on the status of life, money-wise or whatever-wise, because God resides there and there's a mystery to unfold. Hebrews 10, 25 says, some, not not Hebrews 10, 25, Hebrews says, some have entertained angels unaware. And boy, the commandment of the Sabbath says, the stranger that is within thy gates. Oh man, remember the story of Abraham? He's outside and three Three strangers are walking along, and he says, hey, hey, you're within my area. Come sit down with me, and I want to uh, feed you. And lo and behold, it's Jesus himself who says, hey, I'm going on this mission to do the Sodom and Gomorrah thing, but by the way, you're going to have a child. Some have entertained strangers unawares. And you know what? Abraham has slowed down enough to sense God's presence. Well, let's face it. We're busy in life, and we should sense it every day. And hey, any day you can enter God's presence by slowing down, but the Sabbath is this dedicated day that God says stop and look for the mysteries. Okay, so you say, Pastor, thank you for challenging me to slow down, and thank you for telling me to value people. Is there anything else, Pastor? Yes, there is. I'd like to tell you 11 special words you can say to someone on the Sabbath. You can say them any day of the week. But on the Sabbath, you can say, and you can bring the holy in in that moment. Isaiah 58 says, you are not to speak idle words on the Sabbath. Are there words that aren't idle that you can speak on the Sabbath? Yes. I wanna, there's many words you can do. I'm going to give you 11 of them. You can say these to your loved ones. You can say these to children, to parents, to friends, to spouse, anyone that's part of life. You can go up to the stranger on the street. In some sense, you can say these to him or her. Here they are, 11 words or statements. These are the four, these are 11 words I learned in my chaplain's class. This is why I had to slow down. I thought, man, these are life-giving words. These are words that if we could speak as a Sabbath-keeping people and spread this even deeper to the world, the world would say, you are repairing the breach. You are repairing society and community. Here they are, 11 words. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Jesus said the Sabbath day is a day to heal, to do good. Sabbath is a day to remember life, creation, restoration, healing, and you can do that by saying, I forgive you. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. You can say them, express them in a thousand different ways. You can say them just purely as I've said them. But if you give and receive forgiveness, you give gratitude, you give love, you can do that by saying, I forgive you. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. The Sabbath is a day to slow down and say those 11 magical words that you couldn't say before because you're too busy earning a paycheck, getting the lawn mowed, getting the bills paid. But no, on the Sabbath day, you've got the time to be the dad, the mom, the son, the daughter, the spouse, the worshiper that you couldn't be all week long. Now you can say those 11 words. God, honey, children, I forgive you. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. So my challenge to you is on Friday night when the sun is setting, 
and you have your worship with your family, say one of these statements and expand on them. Say them to someone in your presence. And then on Saturday evening, when you have Vespers and you're, you're dismissing the Sabbath, ask each other in your group, this week, who to whom are you going to say one of these four statements? We did that last night. We had some friends over, and afterwards we did that. And I tell you, it's magical. You don't want to get to the end of your life and realize you never lived life because you never said these things to your family and the ones that mattered. And the Sabbath is a day to remember life and to step up. Isaiah 58 says, If you keep this, your feet from breaking the Sabbath, from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord say, honorable and you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please and not speaking idle words but you fill the time up with holiness and mystery and beauty then you will find your joy in the lord and i will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father jacob for the mouth of the lord has spoken i want to end with this story it's the story of howard Hendricks. it's a story from the 1940s he does speak of Sunday but instead of Sabbath, but you get the point. A number of years ago, when I first came to Dallas, I was invited to teach a junior high class at church. We would call it early teens. I thought I knew something about junior high kids, but there was a boy in that class that the textbooks never encountered. His name was Dave. And, I mean, let's face it, those who wrote the textbook had never met Dave. This kid gave me fits before I even came to class, all during class and long after class. He was a problem kid. Finally, I came to the Sunday school superintendent and I said, hey, look, friend, one of, a ha- one of us has to go. It's either Dave or it's me. I'll never forget what he said. Howie, before you go, <laughs> I want you to promise me one thing. I'll do anything. What is it? I want you to visit Dave's home. So I took the time. I slowed down my busy life, and I found his address. I went to the place. It had no numbers outside on the doors. It was a little shack at the end of a long, dusty lane. I came up to the place, and I knocked on the door. A very disheveled woman answered. Yeah, what do you want? Just then little Dave stuck his head around the corner. Hey, Mom, that's my Sunday school teacher. Of course, she was embarrassed to no end. She invited me into the very dimly lit room. And when my eyes became adjusted to the light, I noticed a human form over against the baseboard, which I later learned was Dave's father, who had been dead drunk for nine solid months, who had lost his job and, of course, the income. The dear mother had to go to work. She had no training, no background, no experience to keep body and soul together for the family. And of course, she had to work long hours, and when she came home, she was extremely fatigued. She'd take out all her venom on pop. The visit ended on that little dusty trail as I left. When I got to the end of it, I said, Thank you, Lord. I have found the answer to Dave's problem. Dave's dying for somebody to give him legitimate love and attention. Next Sunday, when I met Dave, I called to him. Hey, Dave, if I come next early, next week early to church, will you be here? And you know what that is, by the way. He said, will you come to church? But that's another way of saying one of those 11 words. I love you. Sure, will you? Yeah. Yeah. We'll get together before class. Next week, the janitor told me that at 7 a.m. in the morning, when he came over to light the fires, Dave was sitting on the front steps waiting for me to come. And Davey and I became close friends. I discovered what he wanted to do more than anything else was to take a ride in a car. I owned a Ford and took old Dave around a little park in our area called White Rock Lake. I discovered he liked to go fishing. So we went fishing together, and I started to build a bridge to Davy's life. I can still remember he was the biggest kid in class. 
And every now and then we'd be sitting around and some other kid would be horsing around and I could see Davy sitting up in his full length and say, shut up. <laughs> All heads would come back to the act. He and I had become close friends. Friends, the Sabbath is a day you stop, you slow down, and you look for people, and you look for God to unfold the wonder and the mystery that they are. And you unlock those mysteries and wonders with people by saying, I forgive you, please forgive me, I love you, and thank you. familiar with our closing hymn. If you're not familiar, it's okay. It's a beautiful hymn on the Sabbath. Listen to the tune the first time through. It's simple. You'll get it. God took six days and created Earth and moon, the stars and sun. On the seventh day he rested from the work that he had done. Then he blessed it, made it holy as a gift for every man to remind us where we came from and just how this world began. Holy day, pure and kind, set apart, sanctified. Enter into joy divine in a temple made of time. See him worship on the Sabbath as his weekly custom was. Feel the fury of the rabbis, for he would not heed their laws. So they killed him on a hillside as the sun began to fade. But he even kept the Sabbath as they laid him in the grave. Holy day, purified, set apart, sanctified, enter into joy divine in a temple made of time. Oft forsaken, forgotten, desecrated and profaned. But the sacred fourth commandment is still valid and unchanged. Hear the Father gently calling, if you love me, heed each one. Not for merit, or salvation, but because you love my son. Holy day, purified, set apart, sanctified, enter into joy divine in a temple made of time. Holy day, Set apart, sanctified, enter into joy divine in a temple made of time. You will find joy divine in this temple made of time. Amen. Take that bullseye of the Lord. Hey, this is how you keep the Sabbath. They go deeper and go deeper and deeper until you find those holy moments where you, God, and others connect. Let's pray.
Father in heaven, you gave us this temple of time, and so often we get busy and we rush through it and we don't appreciate and understand the beauty of what we have. And Lord, the world is struggling and, and isolated. And Father, please let us be your hands and feet and let us go out and take time for those relationships, whether they're with a fellow believers, whether they're with a child, whether they're someone who doesn't know you at all. But just to stop and ponder like Moses did and looking at that bush and say, what is going on here? To realize that we're in the presence of something sacred when we reach out to another human being and say, I forgive you. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I love you. Lord, let us do that in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Have a blessed Sabbath and a holy Sabbath.